Welcome to this training capsule on animal genetics, which is offered free of charge in collaboration with the LabGenVet website. This capsule consists of extracts of a more complete training session for which you can register at low cost and for which you can obtain a certificate issued by the University of Montreal. The fees collected will be used to finance the hosting and updating of the LabGenVet website so that you can continue using this site as a free and unbiased educational resource on animal genetics. Above all, it is for the genetic improvement of our domestic animals. Happy learning. Hello, my name is David Silversides. I am a veterinarian, a researcher in genetics, and a teacher at the Faculty of Veterinary Medicine of the University of Montreal. And today, we're going to talk about the genetics of cats. Why genetics? Because of my professional interest in genetics. Why cats? Because I have a social attachment to cats. The person I live with adores cats, so I like cats by definition. So these are the topics that we are going to discuss today. We'll start with a revision of basic genetics, followed by a word about breeds, an overview of color genetics, which will be simplified, a discussion of genetic diseases of cats, the genetics of several particular conformations seen in cat breeds. We'll talk about parentage testing, inbreeding and the coefficient of inbreeding, an overview of DNA tests and profiles that are available. And finally, I'll talk about hybrid cat breeds. This lecture, The Genetics of Cats, is the first of two lectures, the second being The Color Genetics of Cats, where I'll go into further detail about color genetics. But that's a topic for another day. Throughout these discussions, I will be making use of the labgenvet.ca website to help us. Find the website, click on the picture of the cat, to arrive on the cat homepage, where, among other things, you can have an overview of the basics of genetics. The next topic for discussion is simple genetic diseases of cats. Once again, I will be using the labgenvet.ca website to help us with this discussion, and there are two sections to look at. An overview of simple genetic diseases, the logic behind them, as well as the cat genetic disease search function. Once again, for simple genetic diseases, I'd like to repeat the fact that with a good DNA test that has been validated for the breed of cat in question, we can eliminate genetic diseases from the breed in one generation, and we can eliminate the mutation from the breed in two generations. We have the knowledge. We have the technology. We now have the responsibility. What we need is education and political will to do this. One aspect about simple genetic diseases in our domestic animals, including cats, is that for the most part, they have autosomal recessive heredity. So we'll go over the genetic possibilities. An animal can be NN, two copies of the normal version of the gene, this animal is said to be homozygous normal, clear, is not at risk of having the disease, and will not transmit the mutation to the next generation. The animal can be MN, carrier, heterozygous, one copy of the mutated version, one copy of the normal version of the gene. This animal, since the disease is recessive, is not at risk of having the disease, however, is at risk of transmitting the mutation to 50% of its offspring. And the third possibility is that the animal is MM, homozygous double mutated. The animal is now at risk of having the disease or phenotype at some point in its lifetime, and there is a 100% chance of transmitting the mutation to the next generation. Simple genetic diseases of the cat no matter what medical system they affect, follow certain patterns. There are diseases that affect the embryo and the fetus during gestation. These diseases are difficult to identify, 
and are not particularly evident. They result in fertility problems, leading to resorption or spontaneous abortion. But resorption and spontaneous abortion can be caused by a multitude of factors, including the environment and infectious diseases, and not just genetic diseases. Therefore, genetic diseases during this period of time are difficult to control. The second time period is from newborn to the adolescent animal. This time, the disease is evident. We see it. For dominant diseases, these are easier to control and often represent new mutations. Recessive diseases, which require two copies of the mutated gene, are more difficult to control because of the silent carriers within the population. Once the animal becomes reproductively active and during the adult phase of its life, once again, the disease is evident. However, if clinical signs appear after the age of reproduction, Mutations can often be maintained within the population because the affected animals have already been used for reproduction. Thus, in broad terms, we can consider genetic diseases as being developmental in nature if they affect the development of the organ system in question, or degenerative in nature, the organ system is already in place and the disease presents itself as a degeneration in function. So now we'll look at the resources available with the CAT genetic disease search function on the LabGenVet website. This is a database for the 35 or more genetic diseases that have been characterized for the CAT with commercial tests available. It is searchable by disease, by breed, and by system. Special recognition goes to Dr. Guy Labbé, who coded the search functions for this database. So now we'll see how it works. We're going to search by disease for a genetic disease called pyruvate kinase deficiency. It's an enzyme deficiency. And we'll type in kinase, and that brings up pyruvate kinase deficiency. And it also tells us which breeds of cat this disease is recognized in. And I'm going to make a note of Abyssinian. Now I'm going to search by breed, and this time I will search for Abyssinian. And there it is. I click on Abyssinian, and it gives me the genetic diseases characterized for the Abyssinian breed. And here we have pyruvate kinase deficiency. And thirdly, I'm going to search by system, and I'm going to click on metabolic disorders, which brings up the list of genetic metabolic diseases and here we have pyruvate kinase deficiency once again, and also the Abyssinian breed. Finally, I'm going to click on pyruvate kinase deficiency to bring up a disease page. Here we have it, pyruvate kinase deficiency. Transmission is autosomal recessive. Breeds are presented, including the Abyssinian. Age of onset of symptoms, which is important, and for this disease, we have a variable age of onset of symptoms. The clinical aspects of the disease are described, as well as references to the scientific literature for going into more detail. In terms of the clinical aspects, they include red blood cell fragility, anemia, weakness, etc. Once again, for a recessive heredity, we know that in order to have an affected animal, we have to have two carrier animals as parents. And their offspring can be either clear, N, N, carrier animals, M, N, or affected, homozygote, double mutant animals. And the problem with recessive genetic diseases is twofold. The animal that is affected and sick and the animals that are in perfect health, but are the carrier animals. These carrier animals are the hidden genetics that DNA testing can reveal, so that we can prevent matings between two carrier animals. Once again, at this point in time, we have the knowledge, we have the technology, we can eliminate these diseases, we have to identify the carrier animals to do so, and we have an obligation. 
This takes education and the political will to do so. Our next topic is inbreeding and the coefficient of inbreeding. Whereas simple genetic diseases represented problems that we know about in genetics, inbreeding represents what we don't know in genetics. But what we don't know can still cause problems for us. So what is inbreeding and what is inbreeding depression? Inbreeding, simply defined, is the breeding of animals with common ancestors. The effect of inbreeding on the phenotype is an increased uniformity of phenotype of the progeny, increased prepotency, in other words, the capacity to pass the desired phenotype to the next generation or to fix a trait, while the effects of inbreeding on the genome are a reduction in genetic variations. Too much inbreeding results in inbreeding depression, which involves animals with less vigor, less weight, with reduced fertility and reduced vitality, animals with increased congenital defects, increased neonatal mortality, and, as mentioned in the genetic disease portion of our discussion, animals with increased recessive genetic diseases. Now, these are the consequences of inbreeding, and whereas we can't measure inbreeding directly, we can get an indirect estimation of the importance of inbreeding by calculating the coefficient of inbreeding, the COI, based on a pedigree analysis. To understand the mathematics behind inbreeding and our coefficient of inbreeding, we go back to this factor of 1 over 2. The fact that half of our genetic contribution came from our mother and half of our genetic contribution came from our father. Once again, this is the genetic lottery between the generations as a result of our sexual reproduction. Now we're going to use this 1 over 2 factor in our calculation of our inbreeding coefficient. But we're going to have help with this. On the LabGenVet website, we have an inbreeding calculator. And we have a discussion of inbreeding and breeding strategies and instructions on using the inbreeding calculator and interpretation of the results. So click on the inbreeding calculator link to bring up this page. The calculator is based on the pedigree of the two parents and the ancestors that are in common between the two parents. Special thanks are warranted to Benoit Bouchard, a retired engineer and breeder of pug dogs, for having the idea and for writing the code for the inbreeding calculator. And the calculations are based, on, once again, on 1 over 2 and the number of ancestors. Two parents in the first ancestral generation, each one which contributed 50% of their genome to the offspring. In the second ancestral generation, four grandparents, each one which contributed 25% of the genetic composition of the offspring. For the third ancestral generation, eight great-grandparents, each one which contributed 12.5% of the genetic complement of the offspring in question. For the fourth ancestral generation, 16 great-great-grandparents, each one which contribute 6.25% of the genetic composition of the offspring in question. So you see, for each generation in the past, we multiply by our factor of 1 over 2. 50% times 1 over 2 is 25%, times 1 over 2, 12.5%, times 1 over 2, 6.25%. What's important for us is to understand the theory behind these calculations, but we'll let the computer do the calculations. Here are some examples of breedings that will increase the coefficient of inbreeding for the offspring in question. A parent by child breeding. Here are the parents. Here's the child. Here is the parent bred to the child, resulting in the offspring. 
And this offspring will have an increased coefficient of inbreeding of 25%. Using our inbreeding calculator, that looks like this. Here is the parent. Here is the child. Here is the breeding between the parent and the child to produce the offspring with an increase in coefficient of inbreeding of 25%. Next, we have a brother by sister mating. In a conventional pedigree, here are the parents. Here's the brother. Here's the sister. Here's the mating between the brother and the sister to produce the offspring who will have an increase in coefficient of inbreeding of, once again, 25%. Using the inbreeding calculator, this is as follows. Here are the parents of a son, the same parents of a daughter. The brother and the sister are bred to produce an offspring, and this offspring will have an increased coefficient of inbreeding of 25%. Finally, we'll consider cousin-by-cousin cousin mating. A conventional pedigree looks like this. A and B are the grandparents. They produce a brother and sister who are the parents of the cousins. If the cousins are bred together, they will produce an individual, I, who will have an increased coefficient of inbreeding of 6.25%. Using the inbreeding calculator, this looks like this. Here are the original grandparents that are repeated on both sides of the pedigree. Here are the two cousins. If they are bred together, their offspring will have an increased coefficient of inbreeding of 6.25%. So how to make sense of all of this? As follows. Once again, inbreeding is a compromise. If we have too little inbreeding, we have trouble passing on the desired phenotype to the next generation. If we have too much inbreeding, we start to have problems with inbreeding depression. If we maintain our inbreeding coefficient around 6%, this would be considered line breeding. Now, once again, 6.25% is the increase in inbreeding that we get from a cousin-by-cousin cousin mating. So this would be the limits of acceptability. Going back to the value of calculating the coefficient of inbreeding and the utility of our inbreeding calculator, we can start using these tools to perform what we call virtual matings, where we can evaluate a potential mating to see whether or not it will increase or decrease the coefficient of inbreeding, and we can compare several potential matings to see which one is more advantageous for us. To get further information on any of the topics discussed today, we have the internet. And the internet is full of information. The good, the bad, the ugly. The trick is to identify the good information and recognize the not so good information. Use reputable sites. Use Wikipedia. Use the Cat Breeding Association sites. Use commercial service lab sites, but realize where the sites are coming from. Once again, be an educated consumer, this time for information. I offer you the labgenvet.ca website as a free source of hopefully unbiased information for its genetic disease database, for its inbreeding calculator, with its discussion of colored genetics. I hope you will find it helpful. It was designed for you and for the genetic improvement of, in this case, our domestic cats. So thank you for taking this course. Thank you for your attention. 